So now let's talk about lettering. Um, this is called an Ames guide. Ames was the brand. This is actually an Alvin brand. Um, it's a lettering guide. And this has, again, this is one of those tools that I'm not actually sure the exact proper way to use it, but I have it set a certain way that works for me. Um, <clears throat> these little holes here, you'll take a pencil, usually a like a nice hard pencil that won't break. You stick these, or like a mechanical pencil, you stick this in there, and then what you do is, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> the rulers with the beveled edges work because it gives it a um, little more space for this to sit on. And so it'll be like, I hope you can see this, a line, and then a space, and then a line, and then a, whoop, I messed that up, but, <clears throat> and then a space, and then a line, etc. until you have to reset it and move your, move it down or up or whatever. These are uniform spaces. Um, but this wheel spins, so you can set it to different, um, widths and stuff like that, uh, look up how to use an Ames guide or a lettering guide. Um, this is a traditional tool. Um, I have one. I don't use it that often because I found the, the spaces that I need. I found the sizes that I need and I just rule those out now. Um, with this thing usually, um, and what I do is, I, I think a good thing that works for either the half up or the two up, um, is like a margin on the top of a bubble, and then a quarter inch, and then an eighth inch space, and then a quarter inch, and then an eighth inch space, and just run it across like that. <clears throat> And that's just the sizing that works for me. So again, what I actually did is I made a little template for it, ruled all that out on this piece of cardboard, and then I can just set it onto the onto the panels here and go, okay, there's my top margin. And then uh, since you want everything to be straight, you can either use your T-square or you can just trust yourself and slap a ruler down, or you can put it on either the other side of the uh, panel or all the way on the other side of the page and then just line these up, rule it across, and again, I use the template so that I don't have to like do this every time and go and count the spaces and all this crap. Um, and then oh um, so yeah and then you just throw your lettering in there um, and then ink the lettering um, it's usually the last thing I do on a page uh, also, just a quick note about your word bubbles. Um, I think it's the cartoonist Alex Toth who said, design your word bubbles. He's probably not the only one to have ever said that, but design your word bubbles, meaning figure out where they're all going to fit in the page before you fill up the page with a drawing, spend all this time on a drawing, and then need to put a word bubble straight in front of someone's face. Also, in terms of that, I usually put it behind the head or whatever and try to get as much lettering in there as possible with the bubble going behind the head so that you're not obscuring any of the image. Um, but that's just how I do it. Um, back in the day, they would either have a space at the top of the page dedicated to text or they would just have the artist draw the whole image and then just the letter 
would just throw the fucking bubble wherever they wanted, excuse my language, which could easily screw up a whole drawing. So I suggest designing your bubbles to fit your page. Um, also, it'll yeah, it'll just end up looking nicer, I think. So when you're ready to ink your lettering, there are two main things here. Um, this is probably the most common, uh, I guess, I don't know, I'm not that clear on lettering yet, um, not a great letterer, but this is one of those round tips that I showed before, so it'll get just like a really uniform pen line. Then this is the Hunt 102, this is what I letter with, and it, because I like a a lettering that gets variation in the line. This is a pen that's easier for me to use in terms of drawing the letters. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just this gets the style of lettering that I like. It's not a common style of lettering, but if you like the artist Robert Crumb, I think he uses a Hunt 102 to letter and do all of his drawings as well. You can also use a rapidograph. I think this uh, number two, the red one, is a good size for lettering. Rapidographs are harder to use, for me anyway, for lettering. Um, this, this paper is kind of not great, I think, but, uh, and this angle that I'm at, I'm like, reaching over here but anyway um <laughs> that's terrible but you get the idea you can and when I say draw the lettering I really mean like figuring out all the shapes of the letters so that you can do them the same way every time usually letters will be in all caps um it's easier to read and it's just been the industry standard for ever um you can find books on lettering information online. Uh, it is hard. <laughs> um, I'm not good at it. Um, but if you can get really good lettering, it really helps your page look good. It really makes the lettering legible. Um, but I also just suggest kind of doing whatever feels right with it. If you have really loose drawings, then really stiff mechanical lettering might not look right with the rest of the drawings so I use that Hunt 102 because it does get that variation and I think it gives it you know it looks like part of the artwork let me grab something really quick this uh, book came with some of my pens and this is just the speedball it'll actually it's a standard book it'll actually show you the different types of lettering like traditional lettering that you can, that people have used for like all through the 1900s. And these are just like practice strokes. Um, so just the different types of lines that you're gonna be making when you're lettering. And then obviously, yeah, circles um, as well. And they, teach you how to do it with the round pens I think is the main thing and then also like those flat nib lettering pens like for calligraphy to get stuff like this like these really bold lines uh yeah if you can get a hand a uh, hold of one of these little booklets they're really cool um I think that that's it for lettering when you're doing it, you can use either a real light pencil line so it doesn't reproduce, or you can also use one of those um, colored pencils. A traditional thing to do will be to paste up lettering, and I'll talk about pasting up in a little bit, but drawing it on a separate piece of paper and then gluing it. I mean, nowadays you can also do all of this stuff on the computer but if you're uncomfortable with your lettering if you feel like you might need to rewrite things or just if you're not good at lettering you can do that on the computer or you can i don't suggest doing a font but but you can they have pretty good comic fonts these days but you could just like do 
like draw the lettering and the balloon on a separate page and then put it on digitally. Sometimes I'll use this vellum, both for tracing drawings and for doing lettering. I don't do it that much anymore, but when I was figuring this stuff out, I did. It's just like a thicker, smoother tracing paper. It can get kind of expensive, but um, I do my lettering on that sometimes. And then when I'm satisfied with it, I'll glue it onto the board. So yeah, okay, that's it for lettering. Let's move on. These are templates. Really useful. You don't really hear people talking about this, but I started making them and then kind of found out that some other people do use them, maybe more than I even think. Templates are super helpful. If you hate math and you don't have pre-ruled comic boards, these are a lifesaver, at least for me. Um, basically, this, like, just for example, this is your standard size board. It's, I think, nine by 13, or like nine and a half by 13, or nine by 13 and a half. Um, you figure this out one time, and then you never have to do the math again. You just slap it right on your board. And I rule, I make these, um, these guides for basically as many different vari panel variations as I think I'm gonna need, or like more than I end up using really, just so that I have them. I actually used one of those Canson comic boards, stuck this on there, and then traced around it, and um, used these uh, guides, these like gutter guides here, and then added some, but yeah, you do the math once, and then you just stick it on the board, and, and just trace around it. <clears throat> so you can just grab your paper, throw this on there, and not really have to worry about anything. Um, the only time you have to worry about it is when you're creating the board. Um, so yeah, I, I wrote on here just so I can remember. The standard American comic is a 2 by 3 ratio. So you can just do that um, as big or small as you want, and you'll get the same aspect ratio for no matter what size you're drawing at. So you can see I use this right here, it fits right in there. I just did this with the standard rectangles, but you can divide this in any way that you need. Um, and what else? So this is what is known as two or half up. So from the standard comic book size, what's in here, assuming that Adrian Tomina actually did the same size, which I assume that he did because he's a traditional comics guy. Um, this is, uh, it's this times one half. Okay, so half up. When you're drawing your art, um, you're going to be shrinking it down. I mean, you can draw the exact size of this. That's perfectly fine. You can draw however big or small you want. But when you're when you're drawing and you reproduce it at book size, it's probably going to shrink a little bit if you're drawing larger, which is the standard. And what that does is it kind of tightens up the drawing a little bit. So larger mistakes that you make are not going to be quite as noticeable and it just kind of um I don't know if you try it you'll you'll know what I'm saying but it kind of it kind of tightens everything up gives it a, a uniformity to it so you draw twice as large also because <clears throat> or half as large or twice as large because um it's also easier to draw everything that way it's easier to get all the details in there and make all the pen strokes that that you need so this is what's half up. This is um, standard right now in comics. This is twice up or two up. Um, this was the standard before the half up, and it kind of went went down to the half up. But like, 
in like the 30s through 50s and stuff, a lot of people were drawing uh, twice up. Um, also divided this in many different ways, and I just made a little key here um, so that I know what all these different colored lines, how it's going to divide the pages. Um, yeah. Uh, sometimes I'll do different ones in the back, so I'll adjust it for like a title margin or something. But yeah, two up. This is the current book that I'm working on. I'm doing all the pages two up. Um, so it'll be like a sheet like this big, and I'll just throw it on there like that. Um, <clears throat> this is, I believe, I couldn't tell you the aspect ratio on that, but it's uh, like a comic strip, like a newspaper comic strip. This is just a... Um, the actual comic book size and so that's a little bit different than the actual like live area but it's mainly just I mainly use this for drawing in my sketchbook like drawing comics in my sketchbook and when you shrink it down to put it in the book like at this size with the outer margins it still looks fine um yeah so I'll use this like in my sketches if I want the panels to be accurate sizes or just sometimes for an actual piece that I'm going to reproduce. So that's templates. Um, really recommend trying that out. Uh, it'll make your life a lot easier. Uh, like I mentioned before with um, your lettering, with your text, you can do it on a separate piece of paper and then attach it to the board later. Um, you can do this also with like big logos and um, you know bigger text stuff like that or if you need to make a correction to like say someone's face even like something really small you can do an entire different panel on top of it <clears throat> um, for that I would suggest using a thinner but still good piece of paper so that the shadow doesn't show up and you have to finagle that and delete it later the shadow of the edges of the paper but yeah you can paste ups is like so essential to the to these um traditional processes for making corrections um you can use tape there's a specific like instead of white out or like white tape to to put those things up if you're careful and then that can just be like turned to white like on the computer or however you're reproducing it um, but generally, it would be glue. So you'd make your logo or your, you know, whatever you're doing, and then you would glue that onto the sheet. And that is, n there is like more archival glue, but I think, you know, it's like nothing's like 100% archival. But if you're not concerned about that, I think they used to use like rubber cement, but. I've used glue sticks. There are like acid-free glue sticks, acid-free glue and stuff like that. I don't have any to show you <clears throat> right now, but um, yeah. So like really useful for like, uh, like the title that I'm doing here. Um, I If I didn't want to draw that on the page because I was afraid of messing it up or you know, whatever, it's a large thing to like redo and redo again and again if you need to. So you can draw that on a separate sheet and then paste that on there. Or you can draw it on a separate sheet and put it on, you know, on the computer or something. Um, another thing with lettering, with like logos and stuff like that, is that um, like reproducing a page at a smaller size, you can draw the lettering much larger and then reproduce and then shrink that and reproduce it. So you could draw it very large, like photocopy it or something, and then paste that onto the paper. And you'll that's how they did it a lot back in the day. Like say it's like Superman or something, they'll draw the logo once and then they'll reproduce it at a smaller size. Um or at the same size, however large they were drawing it. And then they'll just have sheets and sheets of that, so you just paste that up onto whatever cover you're doing so that you don't have to keep redrawing the, like, perfectly drawn Superman logo, you know?
know. So really useful in that sense. Um, yeah, paste ups. Um, really important for making corrections like that. And I really do recommend it for doing large logos if you want a consistency with that. So here are some miscellaneous tools that I just uh, thought I should mention. Um, scissors, when you're doing traditional artwork, especially stuff for reproduction, there's gonna be a lot of cutting things out, uh, pasting it back up other places, um, just cutting your sheets out in general for, you know, whatever, for mobility, for scanning. Um, same with, you can just use a big uh, razor on like larger, um, heavier pieces of paper or whatever. Exacto knife. Um, artist tape. You know, it's just like, uh, it's not as sticky, so it shouldn't damage the paper when you're taking it off and on as much. I would still be careful with it. Something that you can do is like dab it on your clothing before you put it down so that it has like a little bit of fuzz on it, makes it less sticky. Yeah, artist tape, um, a compass so that, you know, this is a big one. It can get a pretty big circle if this is the right size on the tape, you can just trace that or whatever. But yeah, uh, same just, you know, for making circles. You can also get these for like, like they, you can put ink pens in them and stuff. Um, but yeah. Um, there's also, I just wanted to mention, there's a lot of uh, lettering tools uh, traditional lettering tools that are like more obscure and traditional inking tools that I didn't mention so look into that if you want to know more um, this is it says drawing gum on it but it's basically uh, you can put this down on watercolor it's for watercolor um, I guess it might work for like acrylic um, watercolor and gouache though um, also the liquid watercolor you basically draw that on or paint it on with a brush on areas that you don't want to get color on them. Like if you're doing big strokes, big washes, and you can't be that precise. Um, yeah, and then you just like erase it off or like peel it off. And yeah, it should block the coloring area. So that's really useful, especially when you're working in small boxes and stuff like that. So yeah, um, one thing, let me get it. Um, screen tone. So you'll notice this on cartoons, comics, um, especially if you're a fan of manga, they use this a lot. This is again that deleter Japanese brand um, it is those little dots, and you can also do this on the computer now, but it's these little dots, and it's sticky, so it goes down like tape, it's, it's like slightly sticky, um, you, so you can see here, you use, um, an X-Acto knife, you cut out shapes where you need it. Um, so like for like the background here, I would just cut out like this square minus like his head shape, stick it on there. You can use the end of the X-Acto knife or some other kind of tool. They actually make a tool for it, but you like burnish it on, like you rub it on there to make it stick and to get all the air bubbles out. And then that'll give you that gray tone. They sell these in lots of different um, shades or tones so that basically how they achieve that is making the dots larger, smaller, closer together, further away. But you can get a ton of these. It's really just like trial and error, at least for me, like figuring out the one that will reproduce best and like how dark you need to get certain effects and stuff. 
but yeah, that's Screen Tone company deleter makes some good stuff um the older brands are harder to find but you can find them on ebay um a, va a brand called letra set and the product is called letra tone they also make color versions so it's those color separations that i was talking about it's that um yeah i think that's it for miscellaneous stuff Um, the last thing I just, this isn't about tools, but I just, you've been looking at this piece of paper here, this, this sketch. And so I just thought I'd show you what the final looks like. Um, you can see that I did that red line on there. So I went from this, uh, trace it onto this Bristol board here, um, with the red pencil you know, changed some things around, did some erasing, refined some things, but generally it's like the same sketch. Um, the more I drew it and refined it, the more I knew like exactly kind of what, where the lines need to be and stuff. And then, yeah, just uh, inked over it, put the lettering in there with a graphite pencil. And so that is what the final page looks like. And this is the half up size. So again, with the red pencil, I don't really have to worry that much about uh, about uh, this about that those lines those pencil lines reproducing. I can just pull those black lines right out. <clears throat> and like with this page, and what I've been doing a lot recently is like like you don't have to use just a brush on your page, or you don't have to use just a dip pen or whatever it is. This has dip pen and the rapidograph, so a fine liner, and uh, probably, you know, yeah, like a brush to fill in the blacks. I didn't actually draw lines with the brush on this page. But um, yeah, I used the Hunt 102 for all the lines, and then this like stippling, which is kind of made to uh, reproduce the... Um, the screen tone that I was talking about, but then I've also been messing with these little, like, you know, full lines to get that gray value. Um, some, some like a gradient bursts and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, using multiple tools on that, you can always do that to get whatever desired effect. So that's this page that you've been looking at from sketch to finished uh, art and I wasn't going to color this page but if I were again I'd do that on a separate layer and then this is a, oh this is another page that um, I just finished for a book of mine that I'm still working on uh, again red pencil a little bit of graphite pencil traced from a much more rough sketch um, lettered with the Hunt 102. So you can see that kind of lettering that I was talking about. Uh, same on the uh, same lettering on the other page. Um, and, and you can see here, um, I actually, it's a little darker because I actually pasted this whole panel up. I wanted to redo that panel. And I screwed this up here. This panel is supposed to go here this one's supposed to go here i made a little note of that just a little switcheroo note so i'll do that on the computer if it were back in the day i'd have to redo you know i'd have to like reproduce these somehow or just cut them out and rearrange them in some way but uh yeah so i pasted that up there um this title here um i actually traced that title i'm not gonna lie to you um, yeah, so that's another thing you can do again, that tracing paper or that light box or whatever really can really come in handy. Um, and this is the two up <coughs> sheet 
and that's what I've been doing for this entire book. Um, yeah, uh, so I guess I'll just say if you like this art and you like this video, um, consider subscribing. Uh, I should be doing more videos in the future, hopefully. Um, follow me on Instagram where I post my comics and drawings and other publications. Um, it's Matt Vituccio Art, just like the name of the channel on Instagram. Um, I guess I'll put a link. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. I really hope that this was helpful. And uh, see you later.